Hi, I'm Jaran Mellerud. I'm a research analyst educating people on Bitcoin mining. I work for Arcane Research. We also do Bitcoin mining in Northern Norway. And uh, today I'm going to explain to you how Bitcoin mining can transform the energy industry. This presentation is based on our upcoming research report titled How Bitcoin Mining Can Transform the Energy Industry. We will publish this research report in uh, just one week, so stay tuned. So today first I'm going to explain uh, what makes Bitcoin miners unique energy consumers, and after I'm going to explain four energy problems that Bitcoin miners can help solve. Bitcoin miners are unique energy consumers. They're price responsive, interruptible, location agnostic, modular, and portable. Because of this unique combination of these five properties, Bitcoin miners are uniquely flexible energy consumers, and they can help the energy industry solve several problems. First, Bitcoin miners are price responsive. That means that Bitcoin miners are incentivized to respond to changes in the electricity price. Electricity is 80% of operating costs of Bitcoin mining, approximately, and Bitcoin miners always pay attention to the electricity price, and if the electricity price uh, raises above a certain level, they're financially incentivized to turn off their machines. In addition, Bitcoin mining is an interruptible process, so they are fully able to turn off their machines if they need to. And this becomes uh, clear when co comparing a conventional data center with a Bitcoin mining operation. So here on the left, we see uh, Facebook's, one of Facebook's data centers. It is not interruptible because uh, they, their customers require high uptime for this data center. But the Bitcoin mining operation here on the right, they only do one thing, and that's selling hashes to the Bitcoin network. And the Bitcoin network consists of thousands of uh, Bitcoin miners around the world, and it doesn't really care if a uh, few miners turn off their machines every now and then. Bitcoin mining operations are also location agnostic. A Bitcoin miner only needs cheap energy and an internet connection. Because of that, a Bitcoin miner can locate its operation practically anywhere in the world. This makes Bitcoin miners fantastic customers of stranded energy resources. Also, a Bitcoin mining operation can be scaled modularly. It all depends on the number of machines. A Bitcoin mining machine consumes a specific amount of electricity, so if you, if you, let's say you have five megawatts of available energy, then you can buy 1,500 Bitcoin mining machines. If you have 10 megawatts, okay, then scale it up to 3,000 machines. So you're able to always match your available energy with a Bitcoin mining load of the exact same size. A Bitcoin mining operation can also be designed to be portable. On the left there, we see a portable Bitcoin mining operation. There they have built in the Bitcoin mining machines inside containers. These containers can be shipped anywhere really fast, and it's also really easy and fast to set up such an operation. So if you, um, if you have excess energy just for a period of, let's say, the next two years, then you can set up such an operation, soak up the excess energy, and when the energy is not in excess anymore, then you can move the operation to another location. So because of these five properties, Bitcoin miners are uniquely flexible energy consumers, and they can solve several energy problems for the energy industry. The point of this presentation is to explain that Bitcoin miners are not just any energy consumers. They are very special energy consumers, and the energy industry should uh, view Bitcoin miners as uh, energy tools that can help them solve several energy problems. And now I'm going to explain some of these energy problems that Bitcoin miners can help solve. Firstly, Bitcoin miners can strengthen electricity grids. On the right here, we see 
the estimated the growth of wind and solar share of the global electricity generation. We see that uh, in 2040, it's estimated that 42% of our energy will be generated by wind and solar. That's up from only 10% right now. So it will be a massive, massive growth. And uh, the problem is that wind and solar are non-controllable energy sources, which means that we don't control their output. Their output is determined by the weather, and unfortunately, we can't control the weather. So this graph essentially shows that we're replacing controllable energy sources with these non-controllable energy sources. This will make the electricity supply more volatile, more variable, which only means that the electricity demand must become more flexible. The concept of a flexible energy consumer that adjusts its consumption after the available demand is called demand response. And by coincidence, Bitcoin mining is the best alternative for demand response. As I explained, Bitcoin miners are price responsive and interruptible which means that they're able to instantly stop uh, their energy consumption during energy scarcity, and they're also financially incentivized to do so. This makes Bitcoin miners a phenomenal demand response resource. Bitcoin mining can also improve the economics of renewable energy. As I explained, the huge increase of wind and solar will lead to a more variable electricity supply, um, another problem is that it will lead to tremendous amount of wasted energy. This is already happening in uh, the central part of the US, as you can see in this map. The central part of the US has fantastic uh, wind resources, and therefore between 2015 and 2021, there was an, a, a massive build out of uh, wind energy there. And you can see here, this uh, chart shows the percentage of hours with negative power prices in the US. And you can see how it increased between 2015 and 2021 as we build out more wind and solar. And um, the reason for this is uh, how wind and solar are bidding their energy into the market. They have a zero marginal production cost, so they always bid their energy into the market at zero. And in an area, wind and solar will, or at least uh, wind, they will, uh, their power plants will be very correlated, their output. So at times when all the wind producers are producing at the same time, the energy prices can go to zero or even negative. And this is very, very bad for the economics of uh, wind and solar projects. And this can lead to a uh, to a stop in the development of such uh, projects. And we already see Bitcoin miners are locating themselves in West Texas, which you can see here. A lot of the negative prices are happening in West Texas. Bitcoin miners are moving there because uh, West Texas is an example of an area which has seen a massive development of uh, wind power the latest few years and now an increasingly big share of uh, solar as well. The problem in West Texas is that it's almost no local electricity demand there because it's a desert and it doesn't, almost doesn't live people there. But we still see on the map here that uh, most of the Texas Bitcoin miners are actually operating in the West. This shows the location agnosticism of Bitcoin mining, which I talked about in the beginning. And uh, the reason why all these Bitcoin miners are going to West Texas is exactly because they have too much wind and solar there. So you will have a lot of hours with zero or even negative uh, uh, energy prices. And uh, this is uh, nutrition for Bitcoin miners. And some of these Bitcoin miners are even located directly at the wind or solar plants and they have uh, agreements with the, the owners of these wind and solar plants that they can consume their excess energy. So these wind and solar plants can get uh, paid more for their energy than they would without Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin mining can also uh, help mitigate natural gas flaring. So, um, 
instead of just burning the gas, why not just use it to mine Bitcoin? So natural gas is a byproduct of oil production. And in some cases, if the oil well is located far away from the demand for energy, the oil producer must burn the gas because it's not economically viable to build pipelines to transport the gas to the demand. You can just um, instead uh, put the Bitcoin mining operation directly on the oil well and burn this gas to generate electricity that is used to mine Bitcoin. So here you can see uh, this type of Bitcoin mining operation. It's built inside these containers and they have electrical generators that run on this, on this natural gas. This is very helpful for, um, this, this reduces the wasted energy. Um, natural gas flaring is a very, very big uh, waste of energy. The amount of natural gas flared each year is enough to power the entire continent of, of um, or the entire sub-Saharan Africa, which is a tremendous amount of energy. So why not just use it for something productive and uh, uh, the oil producer can, can sell this gas and at least generate some income instead of just burning it. Not only is it more profitable for the oil producer to uh, mitigate this waste of energy, but it's actually very, very good for the environment, as uh, Daniel Batten explained uh, earlier today. Mitigating natural gas flaring by mining Bitcoin is actually the most cost-effective way of lowering emissions. You can see here on this chart, per $1,000 investment, Mitigating natural gas flaring by mining Bitcoin, it, uh, it mitigates five times more emissions than building a, a wind farm. So uh, for all climate activists out there, if you really care about the environment, the best thing you can do is to mitigate natural gas flaring by mining Bitcoin. Bitcoin mining can also lower heating costs. So a Bitcoin mining machine basically works like an oven. You, go, you get electricity into the miner, the electricity is used to generate Bitcoin, and out of the fans goes electricity, now goes uh, heat. So this heat, normally, until now, most Bitcoin miners have just uh, treated this heat as waste, but uh, why not reuse this heat? You can use this heat for a lot of different purposes. You can use it for district heating systems, for example. There's a miner in Canada called Mint Green, which uh, has connected its miners to a district heating system and is actually heating a city in Canada with the heat from Bitcoin mining. You can also use it for food production, for example, greenhouses. This uh, picture here of this greenhouse, it's a miner in the Netherlands which uses uh, heat from Bitcoin mining to produce flowers. You can use it for salmon production, for example. You can even use it for whiskey production because that also requires heat. So anything that requires heat, you can uh, connect with a Bitcoin miner and uh, use this heat from the Bitcoin mining operation. I'm from Northern Norway, and in Northern Norway, heat is very, very valuable. And um, we almost don't have uh, greenhouses in Northern Norway because it's very expensive to heat greenhouses there because it's really cold. Uh, but with the heat from Bitcoin mining, uh, you can actually increase the sizes of greenhouses in uh, Northern regions, which uh, lets you grow more food, and that increases food security in the region. And um, there's a miner in northern Norway, which is called BitZero. It's where, it's where Arcane uh, hosts our mining machines. And they are building a massive greenhouse there, which is heated by their Bitcoin mining machines. So you can do all kinds of things with this heat. And this is very, very uh, economical because this heat is subsidized with Bitcoin mining. So it's essentially free heat. And it also has some interesting uh, aspects on the potential uh, decentralization of Bitcoin mining because, because uh, 
heating costs are usually, or heating prices are usually correlated with electricity prices. And right now it's not uh, economical to mine Bitcoin in, for example, France or Central Europe because electricity prices are too high. But heating prices are also high in Central Europe. So if, you, if a miner sells its heat output, it can be uh, profitable to mine Bitcoin even in, uh, in, this, in Central Europe. So um, we in Arcane, we are extremely bullish on the future integration of the Bitcoin mining and energy industries. The Bitcoin mining industry needs energy and the energy industry uh, has several challenges to overcome that we believe Bitcoin miners can help them solve. So the, we have all these synergies between the Bitcoin mining and the energy industry. And uh, I really believe that uh, we will see an integration of these two industries. And uh, I'm really tired of this ESG Bitcoin uh, energy food debate. Uh, but I know that if we get the energy industry behind Bitcoin, uh, this debate will basically be over because the energy industry is the world's biggest industry. And if they can see the value in Bitcoin, then we have tremendous support. And uh, that will be very, very important for Bitcoin as Bitcoin becomes a bigger part of society. Bitcoin is also, if Bitcoin succeeds, it will use more energy and then it can actually be a significant energy consumer globally. And just imagine the energy FUD then. So uh, Bitcoin needs to, uh, to uh, get the energy industry into Bitcoin. And I really believe it will happen. So um, this uh, research report, as I said, we'll publish it in one week. So stay tuned. You can follow Arcane Research on uh, Twitter, or you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Jay Mellerud. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. And I want to thank you all for your attention. And thank you to Surfing Bitcoin for inviting me here. Thank you. Thank you very much for this feedback and for these data and for the report. Looking forward to it. But I have a question. Do you see the energy industry entering into competition with the banking industry? It, it's a, the, when you were presenting the question, just blowed out my mind. I come from the banking industry. I saw Apple and the GAFAM entering competition with the payment industry with Apple Pay, Google Pay. Do you see the energy industry entering into competition with banks? Uh, the energy industry entering competition of yeah, banks? Through, through, through proof of work, through Bitcoin, through uh, becoming a big player in the banking and, and, and payments industry using Bitcoin like. Yeah, if, if, if we look far, far enough into the future, it uh, might happen because the energy industry is so incentivized to start mining Bitcoin or at least to cooperate with Bitcoin miners. And uh, as we uh, all know, the banks doesn't like Bitcoin. And uh, I think the energy industry is much more likely to, to cooperate with, to be cooperative with Bitcoin than uh, the banks. Uh, Hope the ba so. Yeah, so uh, why not? I think that's the more likely thing that can happen. The energy industry is the most powerful force that can get into Bitcoin. And if, if I think they will also uh, create a lot of the ecosystem in the future of, of Bitcoin. Thank you.